The Clan project is a collaboration between global law firm Hogan Lovells and two voluntary organisations, Justice for Magdalene's Research and Adoption Rights Alliance. The purpose of the project is to provide free legal assistance for anybody who would like to make a witness statement to give to the Commission of Investigation into Mother and Baby Homes. The second purpose is for Adoption Rights Alliance and Justice for Magdalene's Research to be able to compile a group submission to the Commission which compiles the witness statements of people who would like to donate them um, and have them anonymised to form part of an overall submission that looks at systemic issues. The Commission of Investigation into Mother and Baby Homes was set up in response to revelations in the Tuam Mother and Baby Home, where it's believed that up to 800 children uh, may have died and buried, been buried on the grounds there. And we very much welcome this inquiry. It is a unique opportunity to finally look at this issue. However, in our view, it is not wide enough under its current terms of reference. And that is why we have launched the Clan Project to assist the Commission in its work and also to ensure that each and every person that's affected by this issue can take part. The Commission is looking at 18 institutions, including four county homes. However, there were at least 170 institutions, agencies, individuals involved with unmarried mothers and their children in Ireland. And for that reason, we feel it's important that everybody, no matter where they were adopted from, no matter where they gave birth, no matter what the circumstances, they should have an opportunity to be part of this inquiry. We're compiling a publicly accessible archive of any documentary evidence that we come across which will be redacted appropriately where necessary so that there will be a permanent a historic record for people to come to via our website for the people that are affected by the issues but also as a resource for the Irish public, for academics, for researchers so that unmarried mothers and their children and how they were treated can form part of the historic record because currently it is overlooked in the record. A witness statement in a court proceeding is a formal document that contains an individual's formal evidence. Um, it's not quite the same here. These witness statements um, will form part of sworn testimony, but really the key here is to tell the story and to get out. It's not just limited to the issues of a legal case, it's telling the story of the individual to get the fullest position into the understanding of the Commission. One of the most important aspects of the Clan project is at the end of the witness assistance program with Hogan Lovells, witnesses are going to be given a copy of their own statement to do it as they wish. We're also going to ask those witnesses if they would be prepared to donate their statements to the Clan project so we can make a group submission to the Commission. So they can make their own submission individually and we can use the statement once again as part of the group submission. And it's really important for the Commission to know common threads of experiences because it didn't just happen in one mother and baby home or one county home or one state maternity hospital. It was throughout the country. And the more that the Commission can get to hear a wide range of views, the better their final report shall be. A witness statement is particularly useful in this context. It helps the witness make sure that everything's down there on paper. When you're giving evidence live to a, the Commission or in, often in my past career, the court, witnesses tend to forget the pressure of the situation is there. If they're being asked questions, they can be sidetracked off onto other issues. And a, the key thing about having a witness statement is that an individual can go in knowing that they have everything there that they want to say and that that will form part of the record. We hope also that it will be useful for the Commission because they will have clear and well-presented documentation that they can use when they come to considering their report. So we feel that this is useful for both the witnesses and the Commission, so um, it's a win-win. I decided to make a statement because I wanted to get my story across. I wanted to do it the way I was comfortable with doing it. I was telling them not just my story but my mother's story because my mother, my birth mother, is not alive to tell her story and I think her story should be told. I believe she didn't survive the regime at the time and I believe 
you know, her untimely death had something to do with that. So I, I wanted to be her voice, not just my voice, but her voice too. Everything was so simple. I was in my own home, I was comfortable, and they would ring at the appointed time, go through my statement, basically just like a chat. I would have all my documentation in front of me, so I, I knew I could pick out dates, times, etc. And it was basically done through email and phone conversations. I was adopted at three months old, but before that I was somebody else. You can't take a baby at three months old and say, there now, this is you now. I had a story before there, and my story went back further. It went back to her, and it went back to her parents. So to tell somebody that you can't have your own story, I, I would tell everybody, go to the commission, tell your story. Whether you think you have a story to tell it or not, tell it. We've always shared our stories personally on forums, you know, online and social media. But to have a place to record that testament, to record our narrative, our stories, to put it down as official record, you know, we're all agreeing, we're consenting to offer our view. And it's not just, oh, how were you raised? Did you have good, you know, this is the deeper story. These are some of the issues that we faced, problems that people in the US might have had even with their citizenship, because some of us weren't naturalized when they got to the States. But these are issues that may or may not be covered by the Commission. So it's great to have a place and, and a group of professionals who can gather all of that appropriately and put it down in writing so that it is a preserved piece of history. Now we've created a a lovely website, it's clanproject.org. Uh, so people can go in, they can download information, they can download guides with how to engage with the Commission. But we're really hoping that our Facebook followers, so that's Adoption Rights Alliance and Justice for Magdalene's Research, that those individuals will actually get the word out. And it's not just the mothers who are in those homes. It can be much younger people, adopted people who will range in ages from 30 to 70, frankly. So we want all of their testimonies and all of their inputs. It's important for survivors to have their own testimony told. I mean, it's one thing to give it to a tribunal or, you know, a group of officials who are kind of, not to imply that they're cold, I'm sure there are caring individuals there who understand, but it's you know, okay, we're, we're, we're jotting it down, but this is more than that. It's, it's run by adopted people, and it's using resources that have been graciously given to us that we're, we're very grateful for to put it in the right form, and it's a first. I mean, it really is, you know. Mm -hmm.